In this video, I'm going to talk about colors and working with colors inside of GIMP. Now, a few things before we begin. First off, what I've done here is I've just made a brand new file. I have a demo layer, but also I pulled in a graphic just so that I can show you one of the tools that you can use as far as working with colors. When you're working in GIMP, there is one primary element that you work with as far as colors go, and that is right here in the toolbox here where you have the foreground and the background colors. Now, GIMP by default works with RGB or red, green, and blue as far as color schemes go. For the scope of this video, we're just going to focus on that. However, newer versions of GIMP, not only are they starting to offer CMYK proofing for print, but also there are some plugins that you can get as well. However, again, just be aware of that, but for this video, we're going to focus on RGB. So the first thing is, is actually we're going to go outside of GIMP. We're going to talk a little bit here about actually choosing a color scheme. And that's one thing here that I like to use the Adobe color wheel for. It's not a matter that I'm looking at it and saying, you know, this is the end all be all, but it gives me a good gauge as far as getting five colors that will work together. Some of the things I actually like about the Adobe color layout is number one, all the way in this lower left hand corner here, you actually have color modes that you can go between. Again, for this demonstration, we're going to focus on RGB. Now, the other thing too that I really like about this is color harmonies. These are different definitions as far as types of colors that you can work with as far as setups that are, you know, for example, complementary. If you remember from art class, your complementary colors are across one another in the color wheel. We can also do a double complementary and a split complementary. And the thing is, is when you come in and you come over to the circle, you see how I actually move these and then it keeps that color harmony rule in effect. This can make your workflow a heck of a lot faster. So instead of sitting there saying to yourself, okay, I need to think of a color or a color set for a graphic, you can just come into a wheel like this, assign, you know, monochromatic and boom, you've got all of your colors available to you. The other thing too that is really, really helpful with this is down at the bottom underneath each of these colors. First off, when dealing in web design, you actually have the hexadecimal value right here. But then since we're working in an RGB environment, notice right below it here, you actually have the RG and B values. Normally, if you were working in an Adobe product, you could actually go and just import this directly into the Adobe product. Unfortunately, when you're working in, you know, something like GIMP, you got two options. You can either take a screenshot and just save it in your folder to reference, or you can actually write it down, uh, pen and paper. So I wanted to show that here as far as working with colors, because this can make life a heck of a lot easier as far as trying to come up with a color scheme quickly that you can work with. Now, once you have those values there, as far as the R, G, and B, and down here is either, you know, as far as the brightness goes, the colors, you can come back into GIMP here. And then this is where that foreground and background colors in your toolbox come back into play. So if I go ahead and double click this here, here you can see that you have many, many options as far as working with colors and how you actually input the colors. So first off, if you really wanted to, you could just use kind of this color mode over here. You can just kind of drag along here as far as the color is concerned and just position the crosshair to the color that you want and it'll preview in your current element. If you don't like that layout, you can also come over. There's a color wheel. This is kind of common in a lot of software packages that you kind of position the triangle head and then you work with as far as the brightness or the value of the color. So you could just go through this process, say OK, and your color will be recorded up here for you. However, coming back to what we just looked at here, I want to actually take these colors and pull them in here. OK, so that would now be where first off, notice here I have an HTML notation over here in the foreground color. What that actually stands for is that's that hexadecimal value. So I could actually come over here. I could put in 
203B66. Uh, so I could do Two zero three B six six and say okay. And notice now I'll go ahead and double click. Pretty much the identical color here. So that's one way to keep consistencies. Another way is notice you do have your RGMB values here. You can come in and enter those accordingly if you so choose. So you got a lot of great options as far as working in uh, GIMP and having a predefined set of colors. One other way that I'll sometimes go and get colors is if, if I'm working with a specific graphic and I want to complement the graphic. This is where up in the toolbox you have the color pick, picker tool. It's not as, let's call it scientific, as working with the Adobe Color Wheel or going to a color wheel and picking out a specific, uh, following a specific color theory. But with the color with the color picker tool, what I can actually do is I can go ahead and come over to my graphic here and I'll make sure my graphic layer is active here. And I can go ahead and notice when I click, you see how it's actually changing that color wheel for me. So what GIMP's actually doing using the color picker tool is it's setting, first off, I have it set under the tools here to set the foreground color but also too, it's going through and it's sampling the pixel values as far as the graphic is concerned. So this could technically be another way if you wanted to, you could get additional color options here. Also too, just so you're aware, if you're interested, uh, you can actually add to your color palette. So your color palette is actually, this. it's really hard to see, it looks like a little artboard here, but it's up at the top all the way at the end. And you can see here like not only does it show the history of colors that I've picked, but also too, it shows as far as uh, my different colors there. 